On August 17th, the world was changed. No, not really, just Kirby's Dream Buffet actually came out, and it is a super good game inspired by Fall Guys. However, it does have its own spin on it with its signature Nintendo clunkiness and charm. So let's get into it. So this game only being $15 is super appealing, but does it have enough content? We're gonna get into that right now because let's first talk about the mode. So there are three main modes in Kirby's Dream Buffet. The first mode, of course, is the racing platforming mode and kind of inspired by Fall Guys and it draws a lot of comparisons. However, it's not as similar because it's not quite so big. There's not quite so many people racing. The main goal of this mode is to collect as many strawberries as you can while quickly and efficiently racing through the entire thing. Why would you wanna get to the end before collecting as many strawberries as possible. Well, that's because at the end there are huge freaking cakes. There's one with 50 strawberries, there's one with 20, and there's one with 10. And you really wanna try to at least get one of those to have a fighting chance for the rest of the games. The second thing you're gonna do in the Kirby's Dream Buffet Grand Prix would be to play a mini game. Now there are a few different types of mini games. There's one where you simply just try to collect the falling strawberries. There's one where these cups spawn and you gotta jump in the cups and try to get the strawberries in the cup. And then there's one where there's a bunch of enemies and you try to defeat as many enemies as possible in order to gain all the strawberries that you possibly can. Basically, for all of these modes, the main focus is trying to get as many freaking strawberries as possible. Then we get onto the very last part, the battle royale. It is a free for all, absolute crazy maniac of a mode. Basically, you're gonna go into this battle royale at the very end of your Grand Prix. You're gonna have all of the strawberries that you've collected and those strawberries actually make you bigger or smaller depending on how many you have, right? So if I have 10 strawberries, I'm gonna be tiny compared to another Kirby that has 300 strawberries. Okay, and those can easily kind of knock you off the side, do stuff, but they're also a bigger target, which makes them really tricky for the Battle Royale mode. Because once you get a power up in the Battle Royales, and we'll go into those power ups later, but if you get a power up at all in the Battle Royale mode, you are done for. Somebody else is gonna sprint into you with that donut and you're gonna fly right off the map and lose, depending on how big you are, at least 20 to maybe 50 strawberries. And it's detrimental. You can go from first place to last place really quickly, but it also happens vice versa. Now the thing about being bigger is that you can move faster. So you can ideally get to those power-ups quicker, but it doesn't always end up working that way. It's also pretty easy if you get ganged up on by a lot of the Kirbys to get pushed out of the ring and when you're bigger, it's harder to hover. So that is also a factor. Now, once you finish the Battle Royale mode, you are actually thrown into a Mario Party style end game part. Instead of its bonus stars, you actually get bonus 40 strawberries, and it's always kind of randomized. There's some for hovering, there's some for the most like, because there's blueberries and there's cherries spread out across the racetrack, so there's also achievements for that, which will give you more strawberries and things of that sort. Most copy abilities used and other things of that sort. So it kind of all goes, back and forth together, and you never really know what you're gonna end up getting. Basically, the key to winning this game is a lot of luck. You want to do as well as you possibly can in the Grand Prix modes, but you really want to hold on to those strawberries and hold your own in the Battle Royale mode, and it can get super hectic and super crazy, and it's upsetting at points. And then, at points when you come back from last place, it's really, really rewarding. You're constantly met after you finish every game with a level up or something similar. Once you level up, you unlock more and more items, you unlock skins for Kirby, you unlock hats. Right now, I'm playing as a strawberry skin with some whipped cream on me. I love it. I keep, every time I'm on stream, I'm like, oh, strawberries and cream. Like, it's pretty fun. I really love the customization aspect and it has a lot of nods to other games now that isn't actually the only mode in this game there's also a thing called free rolling which really helps you get used to the movement of this game because yes it is very different it takes a while to get used to but once you do and it clicks it is really really rewarding and it makes a lot of sense it's just something that you're gonna have to attune yourself to so in free rolling you can test out different power-ups and there's a lot of nods to other kirby games all the kirby games on the switch all the four other ones super kirby clash kirby Kirby Fighters 2, Kirby in the Forgotten Lands, and Kirby Star Allies, they all have little shrines at the top of these areas in the free rolling mode, and it's really awesome. It's just fun to just kind of roll around there, get used to the controls, try out different power-ups that you might have not 
tried yet. Speaking of power apps, let's dive into that. In classic Kirby fashion, there's great powers here and they all do something unique. The favorite for me was definitely Jelly because it can be used beautifully in the platforming racing challenges. So basically in the platform racing challenges, there are these walls that will block your progress and if you have the Jelly, you just slip right under them. It's the most satisfying thing ever to watch the rest of your opponents sit there and bang into this wall and not make any progress and you zoom ahead using Jelly. There's also a donut power up that'll make you go super duper fast, super useful in battle royale mode. And then there's the tornado, which leads to you collecting a ton of strawberries. There's also the fire, which makes you go super zoomy, also really well utilized in battle royale mode. And the spikies, which I have only seen used in battle royale mode. And that's also really good. You get right next to them, you go spiky Kirby, and they all fly out and you get all their strawberries. It's a great thing. So this power ups in this, while not super deep, are a lot of fun and they have very specific uses that make them really valuable in this game. For the price tag of $15, there is a lot to love here. There's tons of content and tons of nods to other Kirby games. While it is a simple game and there's not so much to it, for the price tag you're paying, Nintendo definitely delivered on a solid fun game. But there is one thing I haven't really touched on yet, and that's the online. And unfortunately, the online in this game is really, really lame. It's just lame. because. It's something that should work, you know? It's something that should work really well. And Mario Party Superstars honestly has the best online on the Nintendo Switch. And I don't know what they did for that, that they didn't for Kirby, but something needs to happen there where they fix this online. It's super laggy. If you have one person with bad connection, the whole freaking thing slows to a crawl and it's really, really, unbearable. Now, from my experience, it is a little better when you are playing with friends in a lobby with people you know. However, just basic online random matches, it doesn't work great. Local play is really fun, however, you can only do it with two players because for some reason they couldn't figure out four player split screen. And I know a lot of what I just said might make you go back on your original excitement for this game, but if you can get over that, which I know is hard, it is a phenomenal game. I've been having a lot of fun and honestly, for the most part, I've been playing against computers and rolling around in free roam mode. And honestly, it's just fun. The way it controls, the graphics are just beautiful. It's a great game to just look at and it's a great game to just throw on for a little bit. You know, you don't have to get super invested in this game because it is only $15 and who knows, some patches might come down the road where they fix the online and things of that sort. So if that does happen, I will definitely keep you guys updated. But for now, yeah, the online is very much lacking. But for everything else that's here, I do think it's worth it. And I would give this game a solid eight out of 10, putting aside the online part because it didn't affect my playthrough as much. And it's one of the only racers we're gonna see on the Nintendo Switch first party wise other than Mario Kart. So. I think it's great to support. I think the Kirby team always takes a lot of care, does a lot with their games. So let me know what you thought of Kirby's Dream Buffet in the comments down below. And if you enjoyed the video, please remember to give it a like and remember to subscribe for more content all the flipping time. If you want more Kirby content, I have a little video over here and I'm like, oh, where does Kirby go now? I don't know. We're gonna find out together. So just click right over here, cause it's a banger. Anyways guys, thank you so much and I'll see you all later.